Welcome back to the AR-15 Barrel series. We're going to do something slightly different today. I'll be going over a complete upper from Triarch. This one was bought in 2020, and it was generously loaned to the channel by a local subscriber. Anyway, we will go over the specs, take a more detailed look at things on the bench, and then head to the range to shoot some 30-shot groups. But first, let me introduce today's sponsor. Danger Space LLC is an online retailer that offers products and accessories from brands like B5 Systems, Reptilia, and several others. They've got competitive pricing, fast shipping, and you can save a little bit extra by using code PM2025 at checkout. Big thanks to Danger Space LLC for supporting the channel and helping me to continue to make content like this. All right, so thank you to Danger Space LLC for sponsoring the video, and also thank you to the subscriber for letting me take a look at this upper. So this is a factory assembled 16 inch upper from Triarch. The owner purchased it in 2020 and states that he shot about 500 rounds through it, and most if not all of those rounds were suppressed, as you can see some carbon fouling around the muzzle device. Anyway, the barrel is made from 4150 chrome moly vanadium steel, has a 5.56 nano chamber, mid-length gas, 1-7 twist, and a .750 gas block journal that is dimpled as well as drilled for a cross pen. The gas port measure is .069 inches. The barrel is also nitride treated inside and out. The upper receiver has a mil spec profile and has several triarch markings on it. It's also drilled to accept an anti rotation pin from the tri lock rail up front. The rail is 15 inches long and has a wedge lock design with seven sides of M lock slots and integrated steel QD sling mounts. The bolt carrier group has a full mass profile, is nitride treated, and uses an MP marked bolt. Okay, next we will take a closer look at things on the bench. We'll start off with some quick BCG gauging. I should be using minus gauges for this, but I only have plus gauges on hand, so keep that in mind. Anyway, the bolt shoulder bore will accept a .530 gauge, the gas ring bore will accept a .500 gauge, and the bolt tail bore will accept a .253 gauge. Moving on to the barrel, the gas block journal measures .74940, which places it about in the middle of the ones that I've measured so far. And next we'll move on to some barrel gauging. Usually I remove the barrel from the upper for this, but this barrel appears to be heat fit into the upper. I did give it a little bit of heat to try to get it out, but it didn't move too much. And since this upper isn't mine, I didn't really feel like heating it up any further. So it's gonna stay in the upper. Anyway, starting with throat erosion, we are getting a one with this gauge. And next up we have a 5.56 chamber gauge and this barrel passes. And I didn't get it on camera, but a bolt was able to close on a go gauge and the bolt did not close on a no-go gauge, which is good. Anyway, next we'll take a quick look through the bore scope. Due to the nitride treatment, the inside of the bore is pretty dark, which makes it a little harder to see the details. So we'll just take a quick peek around. Anyway, starting at the throat, you can see some fire cracking starting to form here. And here's a little bit farther down, and you can still see some cracks starting to, starting to form. And here's the rifling a little further down, and things look pretty good here without any cracking. And next up here is the gas port, which has a little bit of erosion to it. And last, we will take a quick spin around the crown, which looks fine to me. And with that, next we will go over the shooting setup and then head to the range. The upper had never been disassembled further than field stripping, and I shot it prior to disassembly. The handguard was fitted with a 3-inch front bag rider. The stock will be supported by a rear bag. An A5 buffer system was used with an A5 dash yard buffer and Springco green spring. The muzzle device was left in place. Trigger is a Geisley super dynamic three gun. The barrel was cleaned prior to this range trip. The bore was fouled with a few rounds to zero the scope before starting the first group. Scope is a Vortex Viper 6.5 to 20 by 44 with rings torqued to 15 inch pounds. Magnification was set at 20 and parallax was set using the head nod test. A Garmin 0C1 Pro chronograph was used to collect velocity data as provided by Ballistic X. A Mantis X10 Elite is mounted to the front of the handguard to keep track of rifle stability and detect any possible shooter induced flyers. Groups were measured by the Ballistic X app. Each group is 30 shots fired consecutively over about four minutes. This simulates a match or practical type scenario where the barrel will get some heat into it. Between each group, I will use a chamber chiller and leap blower for cool down. Distance was 100 yards. Point of aim was a small circle at the bottom of the target. Point of impact was set a few inches higher to preserve the aiming point. Wind was monitored with a ribbon, and each 30 shot group took about four minutes to shoot and was edited down to about 15 seconds. Today I'll be shooting three groups. First will be PMC X Tech 55 grain M193. After that will be 77 grain IMI Razor Core. And the last group will be with Hornady 73 grain ELD Match. All right, let's do it. All right, first up we'll see how the Triarch does with some 55 grain M193. 
Obviously, this isn't a round known for extreme accuracy or anything, but I usually end up shooting a lot of this for closer range stuff. Anyway, the shooting felt fine on my end, and the ejection pattern looked nice right around 3.30 or 4 o'clock. The Garmin recorded all 30 shots, and the Mantis missed one shot, so we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. Okay, so the PMC XTAC 55 grain has an advertised velocity of 3,120 feet per second out of a 20 inch barrel, and we got 2863 out of the 16 inch barrel, giving us 1,001 foot pounds of muzzle energy. And the standard deviation was a bit high at 30 feet per second with an extreme spread of 108 feet per second. The Mantis data looked fine with an average rifle stability score of 99.6 and a low score of 99.2. And then looking at the individual velocity data, shot 28 was the slowest with shot 29 being the fastest. Looking at the group, shot 22 is a bit further out than the rest. But other than that, nothing looks too out of the ordinary. The velocity and Mantis data look fine for shot 22, and the shot felt fine on my end, so well, it stays with the group. And we ended up with a 30 shot group size of 3.139 MOA, with a mean radius of 0 0.757 MOA. And if we break the 30 shot group down into three 10 shot groups, the average 10 shot group size is 2.5 MOA. And we'll take a quick peek at the low tier ammo leaderboard to see where this stacks up. But before we do, we'll do a quick overview of the AZ score for the newbies. So AZ stands for A Zone Equivalence Distance, and it gives you the maximum distance where the calculated group size would still fit into a USPSA A Zone, which is 5.91 inches wide. And the reason why I do this is because it's just easier for me to make sense of the group numbers compared to just looking at the raw main radius numbers. Anyway, the triarch looks pretty good here, coming in fourth place out of 17 groups on this board. And if you want to look at the groups specifically shot with PMC XTAC M193, the Triarch comes in first place out of four groups that have been shot with that specific ammo. All right, and with that, let's get started with the next group. Okay, second group of the day, we have the IMI Razor Core, which seems to be a fairly popular load. Anyway, we'll see what kind of groups the Triarch is able to put together with this ammo. And again, with this group, the shooting felt fine on my end. Recoil felt fine with this load. And the ejection pattern again looked really nice. The target camera had a bit of a malfunction near the end of this group, which is unfortunate, but that happens sometimes. So we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. Okay, so the IMI 77 grain Razor Core has an advertised velocity of 2,750 feet per second out of a 20 inch barrel. And we got 2,591 feet per second out of the 16 inch Triarch. And this gives us 1,148 foot pounds of muzzle energy. Velocity standard deviation came in at 23 feet per second with an extreme spread of 98 feet per second. The Mantis data looked fine with an average score of 99.6 and the least stable shot scoring at 99.2. And looking at the individual velocities, shot 5 was the slowest and shot 30 was the fastest. And looking at the group, it's definitely not a perfect circle, but nothing looks obviously out of place, at least in my eyes. And we ended up with a group size of 2.399 MOA with a mean radius of 0.644 MOA. And if we break down the 30 shot group into three 10 shot groups, we end up with the best 10 shot group being 1.7 MOA, with the average 10 shot group size being 2.0 MOA. And we will look at two different leaderboards here. So this first leaderboard has different types of factory ammo that are all topped off with a 77 grain SMK. And the Triarch comes in ninth place out of 12 groups with an AZ score of 219 yards compared to the Roscoe, which is in first place on this board with an AZ score of 319 yards. And if we limit things a little bit further and just look at the group shot with the IMI 77 grain Razor Core only, the Triarch comes in third place out of four groups shot with this specific ammo. And with that, we will get started with the last group. Last group of the day is with 73 grain Hornady ELDs. This load has shot some pretty tight groups of four. Again, all the shooting felt fine on my end with this group. The ejection pattern looked consistent. The Hornady seems to be loaded a little bit lighter, and to me it feels like the re it recoils a little bit less. But we'll check the velocity numbers and muzzle energy after this. Anyway, both the Garmin and Mantis recorded all the shots, which is nice. And the wind was nice and calm for this group. So we will finish up with this group and then take a closer look. All right, the Hornady 73 grain ELDs have an advertised velocity of 2,790 feet per second out of a 24 inch barrel. And we got 2,480 feet per second, which gives us just under 1,000 foot pounds of muzzle energy, which is a little bit on the lighter side. Velocity SD came in at 20 feet per second with an extreme spread of 83 feet per second. The Mantis data looked fine with an average score of 99.6 and the least stable shot scoring a 99.0. Shot 25 was the slowest of this group and shot number one was the fastest. And looking at the group, things look pretty good. A couple shots high left and low right, but I think we ended up with a pretty good group. Group size for the full 30 shots ended up being at 1.804 MOA, with a mean radius of 0.506 MOA. 
And if we break down the 30 shot group and do three 10 shot groups, the best 10 shot group was 1.0 MOA with an average 10 shot group size of 1.2 MOA. And if we plug that into the premium tier ammo leaderboard, the trier comes in sixth place out of 16 groups with an AZ score of 279 yards. And if you want to break that down further into the barrels that have shot this specific ammo, the trier comes in fourth place out of four groups. And it's probably worth noting that the other barrels on this specific leaderboard are made from 416R stainless, while the Triarch is nitride treated 4150, if that makes any difference to you. All right, next up, we'll look at the overall results with the Triarch. All right, so the Hornady posted the best group with the Triarch with an AZ score of 279 yards followed by the IMI Razor Core at 219 yards, and the worst group was with the Triarch was unsurprisingly the PMC XTAC M193 with an AZ score of 186 yards. Both the Hornady and PMC had fairly low muzzle energy at around 1,000 foot-pounds, compared to the higher muzzle energy with the IMI Razor Core at almost 1,150 foot-pounds. And then the Hornady also had the best velocity SD at 20 feet per second. So, certainly not a bad showing with the Triarch. But keep in mind that this is just my experience with one Triarch upper that was purchased in 2020. Also, this barrel may prefer some different ammo. And of course, I am not a perfect shooter, so the upper could likely perform at least a little bit better. Also, we did have some slight differences compared to my normal protocol. This was a factory assembled upper, and I left the muzzle device in place for this one, which is a little bit different than what I normally do. Also, I was not able to measure the barrel extension diameter, since removing the barrel would take a little bit more heat than what I was willing to give it, considering that this is a borrowed upper. Also, this was a heat fit upper with the barrel and the upper receiver, so that may or may not have affected the results as well. So, there are a few changes from the way I normally do things, but I think everything turned out okay. Anyway, make sure that you are subscribed because my next video should be the start of a new series. It will be part one of my first ammunition review, and will also basically be a barrel showdown video. I have a few things to sort out with that, so hopefully it doesn't take me too long to get that video out, but I think it should be a good one. Anyway, that'll do it for now, and I'll see you next time. Later.